structure of the body and the parts. Physiology is the study of how those things function. Okay, so I always kind of think about it similar to looking under the hood of your car. And you may know, I mean, there may be people out there that know a lot about how a car works. And you could, you know, you could look at this and uh, say, I'll get my little pen drawing tool here. You know, you could kind of go, oh, yeah, that's the, that right there is the alternator. That's your battery. There's your, there's your uh, brake fluid. There's where the oil goes. There's the dipstick, your radiator. I don't know. I just imagine that's how this guy talks. Um, uh, but I mean, if you're looking under the hood and you just see all these parts, you kind of describe the shape. And I think we've all done this when we something's been wrong with the car. We take it to the uh, take it to the place and we go, yeah, there's this thing that's making this sound, or it there's a thing under the hood that looks like this. That's kind of like anatomy. You're just describing the structure of something. What you really need to do to understand the function of the car is crank it up, see how the parts work together, see what spins and see what turns. That's kind of how anatomy and physiology work with studying the body. For a lot of people that are new to this stuff, when you see you know, diagrams of the inside of the body with all those twisty, wormy things, and somebody goes, yeah, that's the intestines, and you're like, oh, yeah, that... I didn't even know what that was. That's like the first time you look under the car hood. So give yourself a little break and give yourself some time to learn what all those tubes are connected to and what they all do. So learning anatomy physiology is kind of lot, a lot like learning to be an auto mechanic. Um, let's, let's see what you think about these terms. Um, when it comes to understanding the difference between anatomy or physiology. What about this first statement? If you read this first statement, the biceps brachii flexes the elbow. Is that A or P? Is that anatomy or is that a physiology statement? Yeah, that's a P. That's a physiology statement. Good, good, good. You get the idea. I'll circle the key word here in case you guys don't aren't tracking what I'm laying down. It's something about active it's something about movement or doing something. It's something about function of something. If it's that, it's physiology. But check out this second one. Yeah, A is what it is. P is what it does. Yeah, so see, the second one is also about the biceps brachii. But the biceps brachii is attached to the radius. That's really just telling us an attack. It's telling us what it's connected to. So that's an anatomy statement. Yeah, you guys, you got it. You got it? So if we go back to our previous picture and we're talking to the auto mechanic, we're talking to the guy at the shop, and we're saying, you know, I don't know. There's this thing that looks like this, and it looks like there's some green something close to it, but oh, what what is it? Is it attached to a this or that? It's attached to this thing right here, and it's connected to that. If you're talking about just attachment, arrangement, where the parts are, or even what the parts are made of, you're still talking anatomy because that's still just talking about structure. Okay, so like my, I don't know, I'm just grab what I got handy here. I got my coffee mug. My coffee mug, I can talk about its shape. I can talk about what it's made of. It's made of, you know, porcelain or glass or something. I don't know. It's got paint on the outside of it. It's my old mug from when I was a little kid. I don't know. Can you all see who that is? Oh, yeah. There he is. There's Jeannie. This is my old Aladdin mug from when I was a little kid. Yeah, classy, right? <laughs> you can see. Look at how look at how raggedy it is. I'm, I'm surprised it's still got paint on it. So you all see me with my with my raggedy old um, Aladdin mug. You can you can laugh at you can give me a hard time about it. But talking about what the paint is, and the, oh, that's just anatomy. But remember, anatomy is talking about what it's made of, too. But it, oh, the one thing anatomy doesn't talk about is what it does, how it functions. Okay. Uh, by the way, real quick, in case you were wondering, the other two, let's just hurry on. This is a physiology statement because it's talking about what red blood cells do. And this is talking about the name 
of a structure. The lumpy ridges on your brain are, brain are called gyri. So that's an anatomy statement. It's just talking about what the name is. Okay. So when I say this is my Aladdin mug, I'm still talking about the anatomy of the mug. I'm not saying what it does. Okay. Let's put that away and move along. Get on with our business. All right. So also on page one, how life, how living things are organized. Okay. We have what's called the chemical level of organization. Okay, so the chemical level of organization basically exists of like consists of like atoms and molecules. So we often refer to this as the chemical level of organization. So we'll talk about these first. We'll even start talking about these a little bit later today, atoms and molecules. They're the most basic thing that the body is made of that we will talk about. We won't go to that level of deep, anything lower than that. But these things are, they can't even be seen with the most powerful microscopes. Big molecules like DNA kind of can, but, but really not. The smallest thing that we can really see with a microscope are cells. The, the things that all living things are made of, cells, and the body parts of the cells that are called organelles. Okay, so this level is sometimes called the cellular level of organization, the cellular level of organization, okay? Then, uh, and that's the, those are the two levels that will be on exam one, by the way. So this is the stuff you're studying for test one. I'll just kind of put exam one or test one right there. Then after test one, we'll talk about when uh, the body uses thousands and thousands of the same kind of cell collectively together. I think of these as like teams of cells. They're called tissues. They're groups of the same kind of cell working together. Those are called tissues. The study of them is called histology, histo. Histology, okay? So we'll get to that. And then from there on, the rest of the time, we mostly spend time talking about body systems. So the first system we'll talk about is called the integumentary system. This is big word basically for your skin and your hair and your nails. Okay, the integumentary system. And we'll talk about the organs that a given system is made of. So we'll talk about the skin as the organ, the major organ of the integ system. We'll talk about hair hair follicles, nails, nail beds, glands that secrete oil and sweat and things like that. So that's talking about the organs that make up the system. And then the body actually consists of 11 different systems that make up the whole organism, that make up the entire body. So integumentary is just the first one that we'll cover. And then the next one that we'll go over is the skeletal system. And then we go over the muscular system. And then we get into the nervous system, and then that's the end of this class. <laughs> and then at the beginning of A and P two, we start talking about the uh, we start talking about the digestive system, the cardiovascular system, uh, the urinary system, so on and so forth. So when we talk about things like that, what we're talking about is groups of organs working together for a common function. So, for example, let me ask you a question. You guys get, get your typing fingers ready. What are the organs of the skeletal system? What are the organs that the skeletal system is made of? Bones. Bones. Yeah. Good. Each individual bone that you'll learn about is one organ of the skeletal system. So. You've got this arm bone up here called your humerus. You've got this collar bone called your clavicle. Each of those bones is an organ of the skeletal system. The organs of the nervous system are like the brain and spinal cord and nerves. Each of the muscles that you'll learn about, uh, like biceps brachii. I talked about that one on a previous slide. That is a organ of the muscular system. Okay, So that's how we will approach the entire um, semester. Um, here's a sample question. If a tooth consists of connective tissue, epithelial tissue, and nervous tissue, 
the entire tooth would be considered a what? Now I'm going to flip back to my previous slide. What, what structures are made of lots of different tissues working together? <laughs> it's pretty obvious now. Everybody's got it. Yeah. So this is an important definition, too. This is the reason why I asked this question. The definition of a body organ is that it's composed of at least two, tissues. two different tissues. Okay, so that's the reason why your skin is considered an organ. It's composed of two, really three, four different tissue types. The skin is not just one kind of tissue. Okay, that's true of a tooth. Each tooth is an individual organ. Each one of them is a separate organ. And the reason why I want to do these at the beginning is I think a lot of people come to a class like this and you would say if, if I asked you guys name an organ most of you would probably say something like the brain or the heart or the stomach you would know some uh, but be aware as you learn through the semester um, a lot of things are organs that you don't think about being organs each individual hair on your body is a single organ it's an individual organ of the integumentary system. It's a part of the system. It's kind of an accessory. But every one of your teeth, each individual little organs. All right, so the systems. Take a look at uh, page two. There's a lot of stuff that we won't be able to take time to talk about directly in class together, but I want you guys to make sure you're doing this stuff and keeping up with this stuff. So the, the questions at the top of page, at the very top of page two above the table, um, they refer to that level of organization that I was just talking about. So I want you to do these on your own, not right now during class, but you know, flag that and make sure you do that. That's good practice. I've, I've seen these sometimes show up as test questions. Um, and I, I've given you some, I've given you an example question of what you might see from that. I am happy to answer any questions that you have about those uh, before or after class. Um, I try to get here early every Friday, at least 15 minutes is when I got the class set to open and I'll stay late. So if you're doing these things and you go, you know, Mr. Nichols, I was working on this. Can you tell me what level of organization the stomach would be? And I'll say, yeah, sure. We'll, we'll, let's talk about that. Um, but I do want you to fill out that top part and I want you to spend some time filling in the table in the middle of the page, too. We're not going to go through it all right now, all right? But I'll tell you this, and this is also in the soft chalk, as well as in if you've got a copy of the textbook, I'll, I'm going to flip back and forth here a little bit between these two screens. In the textbook, you've got two pages that show all of these. If anybody has the textbook, would you mind finding this right now and letting me know what page number it's on in case anybody else has it? Page eight, thanks Ruby. Is that, uh, is that the 11th edition, the one that's purple on the front? Yes, okay. So the page number might be a little different if you have a different edition of the book. But I would say, both from Dr. Schultz's videos, but also page, is it eight and nine? It spans across two pages, I think. Um, yeah, this would be the best way to easily fill out that table pretty quickly. You don't want to put a lot of detail in there for the functions of a system. You just want to, that's what I like about this slide, these pictures in the book. It just uses these quick and easy bullet points to kind of tell us what the function of these systems is. Okay. Um, and then we've got a list of life functions at the bottom of page two, things that all living things do. Okay, just kind of summarize what each of those does for life, movement, metabolism, excretion, growth. Dr. Schultz will talk about those a little bit in the video. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of skip on over and talk about some anatomical terminology. These are the fun words. These are the things. Oh, here we go. This is a sample question. I knew I, I had this somewhere. Let's see, I've got a couple of them, good. 
So here are sample questions that you might see from that table in the middle of page two. Which of the following body systems primarily concerned with the transport of oxygen, carbon dioxide, waste products, and nutrients throughout the body? So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm not trying to be mean. Yes, I am, sort of. There's a trick in this one. <laughs> Give you all enough time to think about it. Okay, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you. Um, I'm gonna show you how I approach a multiple choice question. When I read a multiple choice question, I kind of look for some keywords. Body. I'm looking for like body system, transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide. I know you guys saw that right off the bat. Okay, waste products and nutrients. And then what I do is I kind of look down here and I, I try to do this. I kind of go, okay, what things do I either know are not part of it or I don't know for sure? Okay. Then I also want to talk about waste. I'm going to see waste products and nutrients. Wait a minute. Here's really the key word that you might miss. So the respiratory system, I'm going to go ahead and do this for you. I, this is going to be painful. Okay. Oh, man, all the people that put A. The respiratory system is responsible for getting oxygen in and getting CO2 out. But does anybody know what the respiratory system puts oxygen into and takes CO2 out of? What does it get oxygen into and CO2 out of? The, the lungs are the tool that do it. The lungs are the organ that gets it done. Katrina. I think Katrina was the first person to come up with it. Then Juanisha, you got it too. The job of the respiratory system, and you, you know, I'm not expecting you to know this right now, but you'll, you'll read about it when you get to that, that table. The job of the respiratory system is to get oxygen into the blood and CO2 out of the blood. That's it. Now what does the blood do with it? Look up here. The job of the blood is to transport the oxygen and the CO2, to, to deliver it. Okay? All right? Whose job is it? Whose job is it? to, oh, this is not as good of an example as it used to be, because they have their own trucks now. I was going to say, whose job is it to deliver your package from Amazon? <laughs> but nowadays, Amazon delivers it themselves. I was going to say, the job is FedEx. Oh, not FedEx. Y'all are from Atlanta. Like drinking Pepsi in Atlanta. That's right, UPS. <laughs> UPS headquarters right there in Atlanta. FedEx headquarters way out in Memphis. <sighs> All right. So that would have been that would have been the example I would have used in the past, but now Amazon has their own trucks. They got their own trucks and their own delivery system, so it's not a great example, but you I want you to get an analogy of it. So the respiratory system's job is just to move it in and out. The real transportation is done by the cardiovascular system. But you'll learn about this a little bit more as you go along, okay? Here's another one. What body system is responsible for hydrolysis of fats, carbohydrates, and proteins? Okay, now you go, wait, what does that, that's, you just dropped a big word on me today, Mr. Nichols. And that's because we're gonna talk about it a little bit later. And if you know about it already, that's great. But if you don't, we're gonna talk about it. This is a form of chemical chemical digestion. So fats, carbohydrates, and proteins are all different kinds of chemicals in the food that you eat. And so the job of the digestive system is actually to take the food that you've eaten 
and break it into chemical parts that the rest of your body can use. And, and what system has the responsibility of delivering all of those molecules to all the cells of your body? What system is responsible to deliver all of those broken down? Yep, same, the blood, the circulatory system. Yeah, so it's just like we talked about on the previous slide. Some systems, their main job is to put something into the blood or take it out of the blood. So the respiratory system gets oxygen into the blood, takes CO2 out of the blood. That's the main job of the lungs. The digestive system break down the food molecules that you eat by hydrolysis and then just put those chemicals into the blood. Okay. How about the kidneys? The kidneys job is to take stuff out of the blood, remove waste products, waste materials from the blood. So the blood is the major delivery system. The blood is the UPS of the body. Okay. So top of page three, Let's talk about anatomical position. So anatomical position is kind of our standard body reference when studying anatomical direction. And the body is considered to be in anatomical position when it is standing with face forward, palms facing forward, and toes forward. Okay, so that seems a little bit strange, but it's a way that we use to describe the directions that we'll look at on the next slide, some of the body directions. Uh, next slide or the slide after. So the, 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 the way that we would describe the, your eyes are above your mouth, but not if you're standing on your head. Right? But anatomical position says no matter what position the body might be in, we still always will describe the eyes as being superior to the mouth. Okay, So in a clinical environment uh, where we might have, and I know some of you guys are medics and EMTs, and so sometimes if you have to describe um, the location of a patient's injury, let's say a patient has a laceration right here, and you're going to say it's on the forehead and it's just superior to the left eyebrow. So you're, you're going to enter into the medical record some information about the location on the body where that injury is. Even if the patient was lying down as a result of their injury, when you came on the scene, to help them, no matter what position they were in, we describe the location of the injury or the body part or whatever in an absolute sense as if they were standing in anatomical position. So that's what's important about memorizing these parts of anatomical position, standing, face forward, toes forward, palms forward, okay? So that's considered anatomical position. This stuff is on page three and the top of page four. And so this is another thing that we don't have time to fill out in class. Um, Dr. Schultz doesn't even really go through all of these in her video. Last I checked, I don't think she does. But the words that are on the table on pay, at the uh, starting bottom, uh, the whole bottom of page three and the top of page four uh, we want you to, to look these up, or you can, if you've got this diagram uh, in the textbook, this is also from the textbook. These, I think a similar one is also in the soft chalks if you don't have the textbook. Uh, can somebody again give me a textbook page for this uh, anatomical, for this um, anatomical position figure in the book? It may be a little bit different in the newer edition, but somewhere in the textbook. Here's the reason why I mention it. Uh, page 10, I think. So, on page 10. Here's the reason why I mention it. Because 
practically every term has its definition right there next to it. Okay, and it's usually just one word. So the word for armpit is axillary. So where is that one? That's over here on page three, left side, about 10 down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, so axillary means armpit. Okay, carpal. Carpal means wrist. Pollex means thumb. So you don't necessarily have to do everything on this diagram, but you do need to know the ones that are on page three and four. And here are some sample questions. In the middle of page four of your lecture notes, and you can actually make these up. These are, you know, these aren't, these aren't rocket science. You know, it's just like, what is the meaning of the word axillary? Armpit would be the answer. Here's one in the middle of page four. What is the meaning of the word planter planter do you see that on the diagram or some of you filled it in already yeah the bottom of the foot or the sole of the foot here i'll put a circle around it now that you guys have found it yeah so that's a sample question that would be like a short answer question on the exam what is the meaning of the word planter bottom of the foot sole of the foot yeah so what is the when asked what is the regional term that's right these are called regional terms mm -hmm. So the anatomical term or the regional term, what is the anatomical term for pertaining to the chin? Where's that one? I don't see it on the diagram. There it is right there. Mental. Mental. Are you mental? That's not what it means. So... The word mental that we use in healthcare to refer to mental health actually comes from a Greek word for mind, which is the word mens, the word mens, which is not plural for man. <laughs> it's not like a bunch of, like there, there's a bunch of dudes hanging around and those are all mens. Uh, that's not true. Those are men. All right. The Greek word mens means mind and that's the word that turned into mental the latin word for chin the latin word for chin is mental right that is that's one and i'm glad that that one is in the lecture notes because that one can definitely be confusing sometimes okay so fill in that table and again uh, when we come to class next time, I'll be here early. I'll stay late, and you guys can, uh, if you if you put in and done your due diligence, uh, then I'm I'm glad to help you find any that few that you might be missing. All right, directional terms. Here we'll talk about these right before right before we take a little break. Um, mandible is the name of the bone. Mandible is the name of the bone. So the region of the chin itself, right there on the tip of the chin, right there, I use my little finger right there, that point right there is called mental. And, and here's a, a, a bigger point about it as well, is the mandible actually has a point on it there. These would be your teeth right here, like that. They're your teeth. Those are not your teeth. I hope your teeth are in better shape than these teeth are. So this is the mental region, the chin right there. The whole thing is the mandible. And there's a couple of little holes right here that you're going to learn about. You'll study these more in lab. Those are called the mental foramina because they're little. Oh, there's one on the other side over here, too, like that. And those are called the mental foramina because they're in the part of the mandible closest to the chin. Yeah. Mental foramen. 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 Yeah. If it's plural, it's even more confusing. So mental foramena, M-I-N-A, mina, foramena or a single one is called mental foramen. And the, those are just those are just old Latin words for a tiny hole, a tiny hole or a tiny opening. And in Latin, 
And if, I mean, if you guys are familiar with languages, modern languages that come from Latin, like Spanish and French in particular, if you're familiar with those languages, you know that they often have different endings to the word to determine whether it's singular or plural. And a lot of that you're going to see in anatomical terminology because it comes from Greek and Latin. They do the same thing. Okay. Most anatomical terminology will not do this. Foramen, and it won't put an S on the end of it. That's just, that's an English thing. And, um, anatomical terminology developed actually most of it comes from a time before there even was an English language uh, so it comes you know from 1500 thousand a thousand 1500 years ago 2000 years ago uh, mostly originating from the Romans and the Greeks um, so unfortunately it means that you're kind of learning um, another language so can, let me know if you have confusions about those, any confusion about those things. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> ah, almost time for a break. Let's see. Let's do, let's see, let's do this. No, no, let's go ahead. I, I'm glad to have answered those questions. Short break, five minutes, five-minute break. Um, I need a five-minute break.